Bienvenido and welcome back to I Just Watched. I'm Joseph and we're talking The Little Mermaid, the latest live action rendition of a Disney classic. Spoiler warning if you haven't seen it, but I mean, if you've seen the classic, you, you kind of know what goes down. There's nothing vastly different in this one. Biggest thing to come out of this movie that was good. And overall, I think it's a good movie. It's definitely one of their better live action movies, which isn't saying much because a lot of them are god awful. Off the top of my head, Aladdin is my personal favorite. I think that's the best one they've been able to do when it comes to live action renditions. And this one's in the conversation of being like top three for sure. Like it's actually a, a pretty good movie. I'm gonna say the best thing that came out of this is Prince Eric. I didn't know the cat going in. I still don't really know the dude. However, I think he did a great job. I like the way they fleshed out his character. I like the way they made me care about his character. Cause in the original animated film, ooh, no one gives a damn about him other than he's, he's a prince and he's pretty. He's trying to be like his father, but actually the opposite of his father, because his father when he was younger, he was more adventurous, and then he like locked himself in the castle. He wants to be more adventurous and explore and get to know the world. He's he's fish friendly, because apparently folks on this island dislike sea creatures. They're like, sea creatures? Monsters. Get them. This is how you know he was great. He has a god-awful song in this movie. It is horrible. It was hard to listen to. Still the best character to come out of this movie. That tells you a lot. I think Bailey did a good job as Ariel. I wish her hair was a little bit like deeper, brighter red. Because I mean, I feel like in the trailers, it was a bit more red and here it was a bit more muted. But that's not a huge deal. But I mean, f if we're being honest, for that character, it kind of is a big deal because that's one of her biggest trademarks is that red hair. But outside of that, I mean, she's a talented singer. She knocked that out. Acting-wise, she did what she needed to do so it wasn't bad i wasn't a fan of like the singing inner monologues but it's not that's neither here nor there and i say that because the next best thing out of this is sebastian but not because he was new or anything but that's just because they kept all his quips hit home and you just loved it and i say that this movie is good it still to me ruined my favorite songs that come out of the little mermaid number one being under the sea the song was okay i mean one of the big issues is where i think this movie tries to commit to the fact that this is a magical made-up world so not everything has to be quite real or exact it plays with that a little bit which is it benefits but still holding it back is the fact that sebastian shouldn't look like a, a real crab sebastian should look like a live action version of the animated crab same thing with flounder flounder shouldn't look like a real life fish he should look like the animated fish was a little chunky and yellow and blue. Scuttle, I mean, Scuttle always looked like a, a seagull. I don't know what kind of seagull Scuttle was here. Scuttle had much more to do in this movie, and I don't like Aquafina, so her voice was getting annoying. And she had a rap, and I couldn't, I didn't like her rap either. I say this because creating a live action version of the animated counterpart allows you to really play off the thing that sells their emotions and that's their eyes because here sebastian has eyes but they're just like dotted they don't do anything everything's delivery but if you have the delivery plus these animated eyes it, to give us that extra emotion you can fall into it. you can really feel these characters and i think that's where they're lacking because it's that that sense of it's live action so they have to look like real animals I'm like, no, no 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 it's live action so they just have to look real but not like the real animal they represent just have them look like the real counterparts of the animated creatures animals and such and then give us those big ass eyes and such let those eyes tell the story the emotional connection and i think that would help these movies drastically that being said again it's a good movie under the sea was ruined but not just because of that because also all they did was went for visual prettiness with just showing us sea life instead of having the sea life be a part of the movie being part of the song like they are in the animated when they're playing barnacles and uh, coral and just you know they're pl they're using the the earth and the sea life and the sea products to play the instruments to sing Versus it was straight Sebastian did everything. He sung everything. He even gave us uh, the deep voice that the other fish gave us. Like there was no other than just watching them cutting to different sea life and then having Haley sing for a little bit, which I didn't like that either. That's not her song. Her character just needs to listen and then dip. But she was like singing it. So it showed us. I was like, okay, so she's into it. So why would she escape right now? Little things like that knocked me for a bit of a loop. Javier Bardem wasn't bad. He just didn't sell me on, on King Trident. King Neptune, technically, but King Trident. He didn't sell me on him because he wasn't intimidating. Where I always thought King Trident was an intimidating figure. Javier never gave me that. There's nothing against his acting, but I feel like they should have just picked a massive person because he doesn't have a lot of lines or a lot to do in this movie. And let that massive monster be that intimidating factor, which is the main thing about him. Ursula. I'm not a big fan of Melissa McCarthy, but I think she did okay. Her Ursula has moments when she gave me creepy Ursula vibes. And Ursula's like top three best Disney villains because Disney doesn't have that many powerful, great villains. They have great villains, but they don't have that many powerful, great villains. And Maleficent, they already turned into a good guy. So the most powerful villain is out. You can't use the villain from Black Cauldron because that's the devil. And they'll never bring that to life, even though that would make a great movie. Hook, 
They already messed him up with the shitty ass Peter Pan and Wendy movie. And that's another great powerful villain. So like Ursula was your next one. And at least they didn't do her completely wrong, but they ruined poor unfortunate souls because it, it lost its touch. I dislike the fact that when she was like pathetic to Ariel's face, instead of like talking to her, her boys being like pathetic. Cause she's trying to get, you know, deceive her. She's trying to get one on her and her looking at her and being like pathetic. I was like, damn, you talking to me? Like that kind of hurt my heart. There was an attempt there. So it, it just, I didn't like the feel of it. I dislike the fact that she didn't speak or her eels didn't speak. Cause that's another missed character interaction to have like those quips and that subtle creepy connection to overall. I think it's an okay movie. I think it's a, I think it's a good movie. i uh, just short of being great. Like I said, they ruined those two songs they i didn't like the fact that sebastian versus the chef they just completely cut that out and i actually really love that part of the movie i want your thoughts how'd you feel about it i mean like i said i definitely think it's one of the better live action disney re renditions it's rewatchable it's not rewatchable in the sense where some movies make me go oh i need to see that in theaters before it leaves because it was amazing it was beautiful i loved it it changed my life i'm going back today and i just walked out this one's rewatchable in the sense where like i enjoyed it I'll watch it again when it's included on Disney Plus. Kind of rewatchable in that sense. So I want to, again, I want to hear your thoughts. How do you like it? What's your favorite Disney live action so far? Off the top of my head, I think the best one is Aladdin. But I want to hear your thoughts. Of course, if you have any recommendations for what they should make, I have a few. We'll talk about that later. I love hearing from you. But until next time, stay safe, be well. Y con mucho amor. Adios.